This is the American Dream, Dusted Rhodes, son of a plumber, daddy, and you're listening to the Bob Culture Podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, back here on the Bob Culture Podcast, special AEW Fighter Fest edition. Super stoked, of course, I am joined by co-host as always. You know him as the anti-smart from popbreak.com, Mr. Matt Wittes. What's up, Matt? How are you, bro? Doing excellent. How are we doing, ladies and gentlemen? I'm good, man. Everything's great. Of course, got to wish your cousin, of course, uh, the human wrestling encyclopedia himself. Uh, the VAC attack is back, Jack, although he's not back yet. But uh, we've got to wish a very happy birthday and new dad, of course, Mr. Yeah, Michael Yeah, Vagano. I was going to say, he's got a lot on his plate, but he'll be, he'll be back when, uh, when it's feasible. That's right. We miss him. And then happy birthday to you, Vac. But right now, I want to introduce our special guest at this time. Of course, he is a multimedia journalist. And of course, you know him from Living the Gimmick Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the Bob Culture Podcast, the one and only Mr. John Alba. John, how are you? Thanks for a few minutes, man. Hey, man. Absolutely. It's... Uh pretty exciting time in pro wrestling right now, so always glad to uh, hop on and talk shop. Yeah, exactly, man. It's awesome. And you'll be covering the event uh, coming up this weekend, right? Yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be in Daytona for the Fighter Fest show, and it's just crazy to me because some people may or may not realize that that's the arena in Daytona where Hulk Hogan joined the NWO, Bash at the Beach 96, so... Mm. Lots of mm-hmm. history in that building, and they'll be making some more history this weekend. Interesting. Very well said, man. We're already learned some stuff. All right, gentlemen, you guys ready to go? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. As always, we are gentlemen here on the Bob Culture Podcast, and we're going to start with ladies first. Now, there's only one women's match uh, on this card, I believe. Uh, I'm surprised. You know, I would love to see the likes of a Penelope Ford involved. Uh, you know, Britt Baker, all that good stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised if they add a last-minute match uh, coming up. But, uh, you know, I'd like to see some more of that female talent. But regardless, we have the match starting off Nyla Rose versus, I believe, Riho versus Yuka Sakazaki, if I said that correctly. You know, I know very little about most of these uh, competitors, so if you guys have any insight on them, what do you guys think about this triple threat matchup, and who do you think is uh, going to walk out victorious in AEW's second pay-per-view? We'll start with you, John. Yeah, so Nyla Rose, to me, was probably the weakest link of their double or nothing fatal four-way, and it's clear to me that she's going to be an important part of their brand going forward, and obviously she has her story, one of the most prominent trans wrestlers in the industry right now, and that's something that you as a company, you can work with, and and there is certainly a lot of potential for her to break out and, and be a star in pro wrestling, and you put her in there with two girls who I, I've seen many times over the years, especially at Double or Nothing, in Riho and Sakazaki, who can hold their own, can help carry a match, and when you put a, a younger individual who's still finding their way in there with two established veterans, well, those two established veterans are going to do their best to make them stand out. Uh, that's why I would go with Nyla Rose. Here. Yeah, I, I like that. That's a safe bet. Uh, I'm thinking Nyla Rose... As well on that one. Matt, we'll throw it over to you, but real real quick, man, you had that awesome quote. Do you remember what it was from the last one about... Uh, oh, yeah. The, it uh, was just so good. It, it bears your feet. The difference between uh, you know inclusion and exploitation is execution and representation. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah. And this is... Uh, I, I'm actually a little more on a head scratcher with this than uh, you guys. Uh, is that Nyla is going to be part of the brand. We we know that uh, uh, these other two women uh, look like they're going to uh, do some of the the heavy lifting here. Uh, Yuka Sakazaki, uh, originally a comedic actress by training and transitioned into professional wrestling oh, wow. at a young age. Riho, I'm looking. She started her training. Uh, she and her sisters at like nine years old. Uh, wow. So not that Nyla isn't you know quite a bit better than uh, 99.99 of anybody listening to the podcast right now. But they're going to help her out. And a little bit of her, her thunder was taken by having Awesome Kong in, in the ring with her. True. She's going to be kind of the bully of the women's division. 
most likely looking at who else they have. So this could be used to kind of get her over, throw a couple hundred pounders around. And yeah, that, that's what I think we're going with. That's a, that's a really great point, Matt, as always. And, and uh, really, really good information there, as always. That's why we got the anti-smark here. Really good stuff. You know, talking about stealing the thunder, uh, that's, a, that's a great point. I didn't think of it that way. It makes so much sense. Uh, you know, but I got to say, it was absolutely awesome. Well, yeah. to see Awesome Kong. When, when you can get Awesome Kong, you get Awesome Kong. And I don't think anybody in the ring had a problem with it. Just uh, I think this is going to be Nyla's chance to be the bruiser. Uh, not that she wasn't in that other match, but kind of take the spotlight in that in that respect. 100% agree. All right, guys, we're off to a good start here. Let's talk a little bit about a match I'm super excited for. Uh, this would be included in the buy-in part of the pay-per-view. And again, I believe the pay-per-view is totally free. That's going to be on Bleacher Report Live, I believe. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's I, really cool. I'm stoked I for it. Which I believe might be a, there might be a subscription involved to that. However. Oh, okay, I got so. you. If, if you are already part of Bleacher Report. Free on Bleacher Report Live. It, it is a free subscription to sign up for Bleacher Report Live. Uh, it will, though, cost a fee for those watching overseas in the UK or uh, Europe or anywhere else uh, because they were able to pay less for the big show. So it's a little bit of a trade off there. Ah, you guys are the best. All right, handling business as always. All right, good stuff. So while I'm super excited to watch it, you know, I'll be hanging out a warp tour that day, but hopefully I'll get to watch some matches. I'm super excited. Um, so anyway, a match I'm super excited for. Talking about the buy-in, we have SCU versus Best Friends versus uh, a tag team that I'm just super high on right now. Saw them at an event at Six Flags Great Adventure not too long. Uh one of the matches of the night completely blew me away with the high-flying style. Matt and I were just talking about the uh, Frankensteiner into the cutter kind of combo. Such great high-flying tandem offense. Of course, we're talking about private party. These guys are fantastic. I mean, uh, great story, both from Brooklyn, uh, just high flyers. You know, you guys know I'm obsessed with those big spots, that high-flying style. Uh, I really hope they go far. And this uh, goes into the first round of the tag championship tournament that we're slowly learning a little bit about uh, yeah. so uh, i'm super excited for that and you guys probably have no idea with who i'm going with on this one but gotta <laughs> go uh for sure private party plus uh they had that mariah carey uh fantasy entrance music that it was, was great. That, awesome that, that is a, the tom tom club beat for that that always <laughs> yes. gets everybody going i dig it matt who you got on this one uh i am going with uh now Private party, they are definitely ones to watch. Uh, I recently uh, got a like from the fallen angel himself when I said, uh, Nice, SoCal Uncensored, that they are like the red hot chili peppers of pro wrestling. They never changed, I like and they that. never lost it. Uh, it's just, you know, Sky and Kazarian teaming up on this one, but I think that this one's going to go to uh, Chucky e. T and Trent Beretta. I think this is going to be the, the best friends moving forward, getting that by. Nice. All right, John, uh, for the, uh, well, I guess not the tiebreaker here, but who do you got on this one, John? It's it's hard to outright say about any of these matches, in my opinion, because this is only their second show, so to, we don't quite right. have an understanding of their booking philosophy yet because we've only got mm -hmm. one show to base everything off. Um, for me, the traditionalist in me who has been a part of booking shows before and, and whatnot, your two teams of Chuck E. T. Beretta and then Private Party, those are the teams that you want to establish and get over in front of an audience. And when you are trying to get a team over and, and reach that pinnacle and climb that mountain, they have to overcome hurdles. The winner of this match is going to get a bye in that tournament. And for that reason, I'm picking SoCal. Because I think those other two teams need to overcome hurdles in order to get to the top. And, and SoCal gets that win where they automatically place themselves in. They're an overact right now. Uh, they're one of the most overact in the company. And you use that as an opportunity to showcase these other two teams and then build upon them. One thing that we do need to talk about, though, too, is does the Dark Order play any role in this? We saw them make their big debut at Double or Nothing. Uh, maybe there's an involvement opportunity for them to take out one of these teams and get a few there. So I, I think that's an element that you also have to keep in mind. Uh, but for right now, I'm picking it to you. That's a great point, John. I completely forgot about that. Re really interesting. Yeah, I, I love the thought process, too. That that really 
Uh, that that was that was some good thinking there. You definitely. <laughs> yeah, I dig it. That's interesting. So I think we got to split pretty much three ways here. Yeah. I love it though. That makes it more interesting. All right, let's put some money on it. No, I'm just kidding. All right, guys. Uh, let's you know let's go right to Christopher Daniels match here of uh, versus I believe Chima. Yeah, Chima. No, but pronounce that correctly. We remember I, 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 from uh, yeah, Double yeah. or Nothing. Yeah. Chima. Chima. Yeah. I'm gonna throw it over to John on this one. Take it away. Yeah, I'm going with Chima here. Uh, these two are established veterans who have a history going back and forth. They had some really cool high spots in their double or nothing match. And I think that these two, and, and as of this recording, by the way, I'm fairly certain this still has the main event for this show. And, and that is obviously subject to change when the mm. actual show rolls around. But uh, Shima, rich history, and they're establishing this working relationship with uh, OWE. And uh, for, for that reason, uh, I, I believe that Shima picks up the win. And at some point, you do have to give the quote-unquote rub to another promotion in order to establish them as a legitimate part of your organization. And they didn't get the win at Double or Nothing, so I don't think Christopher Daniels is exactly hurt with the loss here, and it will help introduce a more mainstream audience uh, to the work of these men and, and give a legitimate U.S. soiled win uh, for a guy who has had a hell of a career in the zone by Chima. Really well said, man. John, I think you got me convinced already. You know, that's a great point. Um, obviously, that wasn't the case at Double or Nothing, but uh, what is it, OWE? I think we need that win, and uh, I could see Chima doing this one. Uh, Matt, what do you got? Uh, we're going with a trifecta right now because, <laughs> no, it, nail on the head. Uh, you know, Shima, you know, great career, but not as familiar to, you know, Western audiences and Christopher Daniels is one of like seven guys that are famous because they have literally worked everywhere, uh, won titles everywhere. Uh, TNA, WWE slash WWF, uh, Ring of Honor. True. Uh, famously broke his neck on WCW Nitro. Uh, he's he's gone very. If everybody knows who Christopher Daniels is. And this will be a great way to kind of highlight this working relationship they have with OWE. Beautiful. All right, guys. You know, we had that three-way split. Now we're all on the same page. Only in the world of wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. Um, speaking of page, let's move on to a fatal four-way match. Uh, this could be a match of the night candidate right here. We have Hangman Page versus MJF, uh, our, our good friend. Your who's, best friend uh, in the whole world. Very, around. very rude to Michael and I, uh, <laughs> who, like I always say, which was kind of awesome. Yes, it was. Uh, versus uh, Jimmy Havoc and uh, Jungle Boy, who just had a great uh, interview with our friend uh, Chris Van Vliet. Uh, check yes. out that video. Really, really good interview. I'll throw it over to you, Matt. Uh, who do you think is going to win in this amazing Fatal 4-Way match? Whew. I am going to go against convention right here. Uh, maybe not totally against convention. I see this uh, going to MJF. Yeah. Uh, he's he's really, you, you can argue with Jimmy Havoc, but he is, MJF is the, the Healy heel in this. Uh, kind of interesting, you have like four very different styles here. MJF is more the talker than anybody else, the more of the actor, Jungle Boy, uh, Obviously, a lot, a lot of, you know, really pantomime in the ring. A lot of, you know, more uh, athletic and eclectic style there. Absolutely. Uh, then you have, you know, Adam Page. I. He's the easy pick, but his ticket's already punched. He's he's looking at a exactly. title shot. Exactly. And Jimmy Havoc being like this deathmatch uh, mogul. I think MJF is the best one because he kind of needs... Uh, a little shot in the arm to be, you know, their Miz, so to speak. Really, really well said. I think I'm going to agree with you on that one, but let me throw it over to John first. What do you got on this one, John? So, the traditional booking says, well, Hangman Page is going to be fighting for the championship, so you shouldn't lose in route to fighting for a championship on your biggest show. But it is a fatal four-way, and the way they set this match up, too, it, it almost came about accidentally, per se. And it would certainly sit within MJF's character, especially capitalizing on what happened at Double or Nothing, for him to steal a win here with Hangman Page not actually taking a fall. 
uh, feeling a win from Hangman Page to set up a single match between them and Pike and Paul. So that is probably the route that I think they end up going, and I've got MJF as well. Nice, and and for all the reasons you guys both said, uh, plus he's my close personal friend. Not not at all. Uh, <laughs> MJF, he's been doing a lot of interviews lately as well. He has. He's been killing it on social media. Exactly. Everywhere he goes. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, I've, I've, worked, I've worked with MJF before in a couple oh, different promotions. Thanks for, uh, and, uh, thanks for jumping on that grenade. <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, he, he is the real deal. And uh, this guy is going to be a, a major, major star in pro wrestling. And he is just scratching the surface right now. He is going to be a big time star. Wow, really well said, John. Well, I mean, I have no choice here, but I was going to go MJF uh, for sure. Uh, like you guys said, you know, you don't think Hangman Page would lose this one. And if you think back to the booking, how many of the elite members had, had lost so far? You know, if you're counting, you know, if you're counting all in and double or nothing, you know, obviously all in wasn't officially AEW. Um, so I, I do see Hangman Page losing this one. It's that fatal four way, and MJF needs that big kind of win. Uh, to be one of the top heels in the company. I wouldn't have him take the fall, though. I, I would not have him take the fall here. It's, it, it has to be a matter of MJF just stealing a win. Great point. Yeah, re- really great point. Interesting. All right, guys. Good stuff. Let's keep it moving right along. Um, you know, talking about wrestlers that I've been very impressed with seeing in person, um, I saw this performer at Evolve back in uh, Queens, a while back, and most recently back at Great Adventure. Uh, of course, we're talking about Darby Allen. Really, just wow, wow, wowed me. Um, you know, before I went went to the event, Matt was giving me a little info on Darby Allen. Just a, what a backstory. I think you're saying skateboarder from was that from Seattle? Yeah, from from Seattle or Washington State, uh, somewhere around there. Uh, Semi pro skateboarder uh, was living in an abandoned warehouse and, and out on what the streets story. for part of his career uh, as a skateboarder and, and as a wrestler. Um, and, and as I mentioned uh, to you the one time, uh, we look at all these transitional athletes, of course, you know, you were an NCAA All-American in wrestling or football, so you're, you're big, you're tough, you, you can stand the pain. These extreme sports athletes, you know, who who has a greater capacity to work through pain than like a pro skateboarder, and he's really been using that uh, throughout his career. Interesting. Uh, yeah, l- looking at it from all angles here, as as we always do here on the BCP. Uh, but a guy just really impressed me. You know everything you said, Matt, and more in the ring. He started out in a battle royal. Very great job in that. Then he had a match versus JT Dunn uh, for the title in that particular situation. And just so fluid in the ring, you know, lots of roles. I was super impressed. You know, I'm, I'm kind of picky about my wrestling style and my wrestlers, but super impressed. Uh, a match with Cody, I think, is a little bit of a dream match here. Not entirely sure how this came about or where this came from, but I'm loving it. Uh, I'm so high on Darby Allen right now. I, I got to go Darby Allen. Uh, John, I'll throw it to you, man. What, what do you think about this one? Yeah, Darby Allen is one of the most unique talents I've ever worked with as well. He is like that. Pro wrestler Spider Man. He's he's incredible, nice. and and I think he and Cody will have a really interesting dynamic. I don't suspect a loss from Cody here, especially heading into the fight for the fall match. But uh, it'd be a heck of a proverbial rub for a guy like Darby Allen to earn a win in this spot. I, I'm just I'm not sure I see it. I am a little concerned about their blending of styles because we've never really seen mm. Cody in this kind of match before. But maybe it's an update for him to show up and show up. So we'll see what happens when I'm going with Cody. Interesting, man. That's, that's, that's a great point. Matt, what do you got? I'll just uh, bring it back. A uh, little shout-out, a little kudos to Cody because uh, we're talking about what the, the executive vice president and he, he won the NWA title for that great, uh, moment at all in absolutely and yeah he did beat dustin but you know he's putting himself in the middle of the card and he's now you know this is a pretty big show for them and what's he doing he gets put himself in the middle of the card most likely and working to give the rub to somebody that a lot of audiences don't know about so just a little 
we'll shout out for to him for that. Uh, you know, good on him. Okay, where do you so where do you think this I'm, ends I'm up? I'm going with Cody. I think that uh, eventually Cody's going to pull himself out of the middle of the card, and you know he, he's going to keep the keep the wins going and just being in there and getting the exposure is going to be enough that Darby doesn't need the whole win out of this. Interesting. And what do you think uh, Cody's going to smash with a sledgehammer this time around? <laughs> uh, just, <laughs> a motorcycle? <laughs> a, a bust of Paul Heyman, maybe? Oh, uh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving right along here, guys. Good stuff, as always. Let's talk about one that I'm kind of confused on. I, I you know, Maybe you guys can sway me a little bit on this one. Uh, we have Kenny Omega and the Bucks. That's going to be a great match, of course, versus the Lucha Bros and the Laredo Kid. Is that correct? Laredo Kid. I'm not familiar with Laredo Kid as much, so if you guys have any info there. Uh, Matt, what do you got on this one? Uh, this is interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's a quasi-rematch uh, between the Young Bucks right. and the Lucha Bros. Uh, and when you're adding in more elements, I don't know if Laredo Kid is a the answer to bringing in a Kenny Omega I mean, on paper, but it it's wrestling. It's not, uh, uh, it's not chess. But Laredo Kid uh, is a is a fan of high flying. This guy ding, was ding, a, <laughs> this guy was a triple A cruiserweight champ and a, a member of a triple uh, A uh, trios champ. The, I like uh, him already. The the trios tradition in uh, Mexican wrestling, where it's uh, the three man tag, and you don't actually have to tag to go in, and it's just. Cool. The, the controlled chaos. Once the once the legal man's feet hit the floor outside the ring, somebody else can just jump right in. I dig that, it. That's how the rules go. Uh, and people who watch Lucha Underground have seen this. Uh, people who have uh, seen the a modified version with the Lucha House Party rules. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's where that came from. Yeah, okay, now I understand. Yeah, I got. So, uh, who's winning this one, man? Th- this is. You would think that they would get the the come up, the Lucha Bros would get the come up and stay, you know, and split the series. It, it's not a straight up series. Uh, I will go Devil's Advocate and just go with the Lucha Bros just to give them one in the in the W column. Yeah, you know, I think the question here, like I was alluding to earlier, are the members of the elite going to start losing a little bit more here and there? So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with you, Matt. I'm gonna go Lucha Bros, and I'm excited to see uh, Laredo Kid a little bit. But as we always say here on the Bob Culture Podcast, the real winners, the fans. All right, John, what do you got on this one? Yeah, uh, this this uh, I've been describing to uh, some of our listeners on Living the Gimmick and our Patreon, Patreon forward slash Living the Gimmick. Uh, I, I I believe that this is going to be the six man tag that. They wanted to do it all in that ultimately got cut for time. Mm. This will be the chaos of that match that everyone wanted to see. It, it is a tough one to pick uh, because uh, there are multiple ways you can go with this. And who distracts who if there's any distractions? Uh, Kenny Omega right now feels like he needs a bit of a win. And, and, and maybe Kenny Omega over Laredo Kid. Is the route you go for the finish of this match in order to get them that win where the Lucha Bros don't necessarily take that fall? I, I, I do feel like Kenny can't go into all-out winless. And, and, and I know that may sound a little silly to some because some would say, oh, well, it just means he has to overcome things. But this guy is ultimately the star of your promotion. And uh, I would not have him uh, lose his first two bats, especially since... Every time Kenny Omega does lose, it should be treated as a, oh my, Kenny Omega just lost the kind of moment, kind of reaction. Uh, and, and for that reason alone, I am going with the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. But it would be a great spot, too, for Cody and, and Dustin to play some mind games, perhaps, with Kenny and the Bucks, or the Bucks in particular. But I am going with them. Wow, all really good points. You know, I said you guys were going to sway me on this one. Now I'm leaning back the other way. You know, I'm not going to change my answer, though. I'll stick with the Lucha Bros. It's a great point. Do you have the two losses for Lucha Bros? Do you have the two losses for Omega? Uh, Really great points, guys. You guys are the best, so I really appreciate that. Uh, Let's throw it back to the buy-in. We have another match on there. Please help me out with this one. Um, Two competitors I'm not as familiar with. Is it Michael Nakazawa versus Alex 
Jabali. Jabali, I believe. Not familiar with these competitors. Matt, you got anything for me? Uh, yeah, a bit of a long walk for this one. One of the things they did really good with Double or Nothing is they followed that Kevin Sullivan blueprint of the three ring circus for the match card. And yeah, they, true. And they, they opened up with all these colorful characters like Orange Cassidy and Luchasaurus and everybody to get everybody kind of into the show. Nice. And. This could be going that way. Um, Michael Nakazawa uh, has wrestled everywhere in Japan. Uh, All Japan, DDT Pro, uh, New Japan, Michinoku Pro. And he's he has a really good relationship with a lot of the gaijin and western wrestlers, particularly Kenny Omega. Uh, apparently really good English skills, so he's working as a go-between guy for them. Uh, uh uh, judo practitioner slash competitor in, in his in his off time, uh, he has his uh, degree in physical education. So he, he's a he's a tough guy, but he he likes to have a lot of fun. He, he's he's been the funny guy before, and that's where this might be going. Because I'm looking up Alex Jabali, and he is most famous as a competitive gamer. Really? He yeah he host and has created this uh federation for uh competitive fighting games i'm guessing uh, from the looks of things and this could be uh it says hardcore match i don't know of any any experience he has in any of that we could be watching this played out uh, with controllers, for all we know, is what's going in. So What a is, twist that would be. It is. I think that it would be uh, – it, it's a bit of a gamble when you're expecting one thing. You're expecting the hardcore match, and then the guys come out, and they set up a landline. Yeah. Uh, but – uh, this this looks like uh, something else you're probably not going to get anywhere else, or at least wouldn't get crucified for anywhere else but AEW. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where this goes. Um, I mean, that's a great idea, though, man. I'd actually kind of be down for that. Yeah. Uh, and and it might and it looks like it'll help uh, you know establish Nakazawa, get get him in people's eyes over on uh, this side of the Pacific. Interesting. All right. Very good. Good stuff, Matt, as always. John, what do you got on this one? Yeah, and, and this is that kind of combination of what Party of Fest is supposed to be about, where it's combining gaming and pro wrestling, so I do think that's a good point. Um, I'm going with Michael Nakazawa, because Michael Nakazawa has been one of the feature pieces of being the elite for the past three months or so, and he had that whole stuff with the Young Bucks that they were pushing for a while. If I'm not mistaken, he was the first guy eliminated from the Casino Battle Royal, so give him a little something. He's very entertaining as I said, he's kind of been everywhere and uh, he, he's, he's a good guy to have on your lower card, your mid card, and uh, he's a guy who they're going to have a lot going forward. So he's someone I run with and give him the win here. Good stuff, guys. You guys got all the info. Uh, for the reasons I think Matt said, I'm interested in the character, I think, or what's going on with Jabali a little bit more. So I'll go that. Who did you go with again, Matt? Uh, I'm going with uh, Nakazawa because he's oh, okay. going to be you know, in their rings going forward. So okay. that, that's where I have it. I'll be the uh, odd man out on this one. I'll go I'll go Jabali just to be that guy. <laughs> All right, good stuff as always, guys. Let's keep it moving here. A lot of good matches. Uh, is, is Are we down to one? Is that correct? Uh, no, we got uh, a women's match on the... Uh, oh, there is, another, there is another yes, women's got, match. Uh, okay, Kylie, I didn't have it. Go ahead. Kylie Ray versus Leva Bates. Uh, and Leva Bates will be accompanied with uh, Peter Avalon. Okay. Uh, Kylie Ray, I'm familiar with from uh, Smiley Kylie. Essentially, yeah. the Bailey uh, character. We yeah, the, the, to. This, the sweet girl, the, uh, you know, the, the, the Pikachu aficionado. Yeah. Uh, Leva Bates, uh, fans of NXT from a few years ago, saw her make a bunch of appearances. Uh, got the nickname Blue Pants. Oh, uh, the librarian. Yes, yeah, right, she yeah. she is now taking on one of the two characters with the librarian uh, persona. Yes, uh, which was a Twitter kind of contest. Yes, they had. and they they grabbed two uh, independent wrestlers with uh, w- with some decent notoriety, some decent chops. Uh, Leva Bates, of course, known as this big cosplayer, uh, the Fallout jumpsuit, uh, okay. some some 
superhero cosplay. Showed up as the Leva Taker a few times. Nice, I dig it. Uh, yeah, and and Peter Avalon, uh, Championship Wrestling for Hollywood, PWG, uh, few appearances in TNA slash Impact. Okay, and. I, I don't blame them for grabbing both of them. It's interesting that they're both taking the librarian character. Right. But uh, th- this will be a neat one. Yeah, interesting. Who's who's uh, winning this one? Uh, you know what? I'm probably going to go with uh, Leva on this one just to yeah. get the the librarian character a, a little more over, probably maybe establish as a heel. You yeah, know, I see a heel. Ky- really. Kylie's too, too giggly, too happy. She needs to be shh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and she's got somebody on the outside for interference and Kylie doesn't. So Exactly. Unless she brought a Pokeball. <laughs> oh, there it is. Wow, yeah, that, brilliant. There there's a little twist in that match. I'll go Kylie Ray kind of for all those reasons, kind of uh defeating the numbers game, beating the big bad heel that we're getting int- introduced to. Uh so for all those reasons I'll go the opposite direction. I'll go Kylie Ray. Uh John for the tiebreaker on this one. Yeah, so the story they've been telling on being the elite is that Peter Avalon is in love with, with Leva and that ah. he wants, he was, he was jealous at first of her, but now he wants to get to know her a little better and spend some time. He, he suggested that she be, he be the, the day shift and she be the night shift or maybe that they just both get the same shift at the library. <laughs> uh, so my thinking is that he accidentally costs her because he's smitten with her and is trying to help her. Uh, if that is the story that they try to tell, and for that reason, I'm going with Kylie. But it could go the other way where he helps her cheat to win. And uh, we don't really know because, again, like it's like the only second show they've ever had. So we don't know the full route they're going. But based off being the elite, that is my thinking that he's just so smitten with her that he tries to help her and he acts as the fuck. I like, I like what you're saying. Yeah, and uh, funny that gets brought up because, you know, cheat to win or cheat to lose, uh, that could very well set up a librarian versus librarian storyline and match down the line. Interesting. Uh, AEW doesn't seem like the type that would shy away from a few intergender matches on the, uh, on the lower card, and that's where this could come in. Absolutely. Always the potential for that. Switching your answer, you're sticking with... Uh, I'm sticking. Sticking, I like I'm sticking it. With stick with it. Your, stick your guns, I let's like he- it. Let's head your bets. <laughs> All right, guys. Now, now feel free to get creative on this one. Of course, we have probably, arguably the hottest name in wrestling right now, uh, I would say. Certainly. Hard, hard to argue. Unless you're counting Heyman and Bischoff. Yeah, oh, then, that's new. Maybe we'll talk they, about then, that in yeah, a bit. Yeah, Mox has still got that crown. Yeah. yeah. Got a lot of moxie. Uh, so we, oh, I'm so sorry. So we have John Moxley versus Janela, which I believe I read earlier today is an unsanctioned, unsanctioned match. match. So well, that's interesting. And and bringing it back to a little bit what John was saying about kind of the storylines and being elite, it really is amazing how you know we've only had I guess one official pay per view as AEW. Hmm. And we have a lot of this storytelling uh, going on through YouTube and, and Twitter and social media and things like that. So it's very interesting that we're able to follow in that way. Uh, that being said, I'm very excited to see the TNT weekly show and to see these characters progress and these stories be told. But the way they're doing it, it seems to be working, and, and it's very fascinating to me. But, of course, we have John Moxley versus someone we saw at Boardwalk Beatdown versus our good friend uh, Casey Navarro, a great up-and-comer. Uh, who beat uh, Joey Janela, of course, who I'm talking about, for the uh, light heavyweight standalone championship, Janela. But what a performance. Uh, really just oh, yeah. a great performer. We saw him have a great match with Hangman Page back in All In. Moxley versus Janela, just what a match. I'm, I'm super excited for it. I think there may be some surprises. There may be some tricks on the sleeve. Uh, I know we were kind of talking about main events earlier. It, do we see this as a possible main event candidate? Or any uh, surprises or appearances or anything like that? John, I'll throw it to you first. Yeah, I mean, it certainly could be the main event. It is an unsanctioned match. Joey Janela cut a hell of a promo on their social media, and they did a really, really awesome video package for this match earlier uh, on Thursday. And uh, an announcing this is an unsanctioned match. Uh, this is one of my great so right now. Uh, why it's an unsanctioned match because of the two men performing and they are going to kill each other. There's going to be a lot of blood. Uh, it is going yeah. to be brutal. Um, 
But when you're talking an unsanctioned match, traditionally in pro wrestling booking, you go to that route because of a history, a story that you're telling, uh, that something leads to that. There's a build to an unsanctioned match. Look no further than Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Johnny Gargano, and Tommaso Ciampa. Brilliant. Uh, there, there's more substance into that storytelling, whereas this is kind of like, well, the two crazy guys, they both have that match background, let's go to there and see what they're going to do. And, like, again, it will be fine. The audience will eat it up. It will be a hell of a match. I'm sure they will kill each other. I don't see any way John Moxley doesn't win this match. It's, he should be one of the top guys in AEW, and Joey Janela can afford a loss here. He's not hurt by it. So I do suspect that's the route they go, but, but that is a criticism I have of this, in that maybe you're rushing this and not think that a little too quickly. I, I love what you're saying, John, and I totally agree with that criticism. Uh, you use Gargano and Ciampa. You know, I'm a huge NXT guy. Great example of a perfect unsanctioned situation. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't really connect. Uh, I, I get that. Again, going to be a great match. I'm super excited for it still. And like you said, I don't see Moxley losing in any capacity. Uh, let's throw it over to the Andy Smark. What do you got on this one? Yeah, like I said, this is probably uh, either going to open the show or close the show would probably be the best place for this uh, because they, they're they running this unsanctioned uh, angle with it. Um, yeah, and like I said, th- these are two guys who have not shied away from broken glass during their careers. Uh, <laughs> huh. And Joey Janela, like I said, he, as much as, as we've given, he's gotten this notoriety and following – when he, I found that he was signed really exciting because his most important value to that company isn't between the ropes, it's between the ears. Uh, he is a guy who is building from that, that uh, I'll say it, Disco Inferno, Glenn, Glenn Gilberti level of wrestling brain, uh, which he doesn't get enough credit for over the years, up to like Dutch Mantel territory is where I think we're going to be talking about him in, in 10, 20 years. And Love it. this is going to be, uh, you know, he, he's willing to go out there. He's willing to put his tweaks and his polishes on wherever they want this to go. Uh, two guys who are game for just about anything uh, open to work with. You know, again, not a lot of ego between these guys. It's about the show. And if we're going to see another cigarette getting stapled to somebody's forehead, this is the match we're going to see it it's in. The match, yep. Again, part of that three ring circus. Uh, if especially if this hardcore match ends up being done digitally, uh, this <laughs> is going to fill in that spot on the card. And of course, it's Mox. It's in, Mox. In, unless Joey Janela is now going to end up turning out to be the, the head of some sort of stable that appears as a result of this match, uh, we're going with Moxley. Absolutely, and probably see that Penelope. I know we love Penelope Ford. Uh, probably that Penelope. She Ford is pack. a bad, bad girl. That, that's right, uh, and a heck of a wrestler, as as we saw firsthand. Amazing, dodging at, those at, kendo at stick 24, shots. Twenty four, twenty five. Oh, she's back Got a, oh. got a lot of chops. Yeah, yeah, and hopefully we'll see her in a match real soon. Maybe uh, just an ace up their sleeve right now. We'll see. Guys, really good stuff as always. I appreciate a few minutes. Just a little curveball for you guys before we get out of here. Wanted to talk a little bit about Chris Jericho. We haven't talked about him too much in this one. Do we see any sort of Chris Jericho cameo or appearance or interference? Or I, I don't think he was ever officially advertised in the show. Okay. I, I know he came out and said, well, I'm not going to do something on free TV or something along those lines. Oh, that's what it was. Uh, that's what I, it was. I, I, I'm fairly certain he does have a Fox show at night. Uh, now, he had a Fox show the day of All In and still made that show. So I, I'm not quite sure what will really happen. I don't suspect to see him here. He has been announced for Fight for the Fallen, and he will be performing on that show in some capacity. So uh, I, I don't think he's seeing him here, but maybe some sort of promo would be a good idea. Oh, true. Good good stuff. Any Anything to add on Jericho? Uh, you know, we, we can certainly see... Uh... You know, e- either before or after that four-way with Hangman Page, them just throwing something up on on the video screen. True, yeah. For just him to uh, just comment, he, they can even run it where he's he's backstage at the Fozzie show, mm-hmm. and and just decide to check it out on. Uh, I find it, 
especially if you know MJF go anybody but Hangman Page goes over where he just shakes his head and sucks his teeth and uh, kind of throws a little gasoline on the fire there, kind of look down his nose a little bit at Hangman Page and get that ball rolling. Real quick before we get out of here, gentlemen, I wanted to touch on big news in the world of WWE. You know, they keep saying it's not a competition. They're not going head to head. What we as fans keep saying is competition is healthy. And I think we're starting to see these companies make various moves. Obviously, I believe we see Heyman as the head of Raw, I believe. Or what's what's the position? Uh, Uh, Executive director of Raw. Right. uh, Bischoff, Bischoff. executive director of SmackDown. So... uh, as, we always, as Vince always says, going to shake things up a little bit. I tried my best on that one. The ultimate wild card. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and not to talk too much WWE on this one, but again, we're talking competition. Uh, we just saw the Evolve 10th anniversary, or the Evolve anniversary show uh, featuring some of our favorite wrestlers going kind of head-to-head with, uh, I believe, an AEW event or something like that. Uh, yes, AEW. Uh, it was, it was the charity show? event, I believe, right? Or something it like that. It may have been. But uh, a lot of interesting storylines going on. Uh, like John said at the beginning of the show, what a time to be a wrestling fan. Very interesting stuff happening. Any comments uh, or feelings about these moves uh, shaking things up a little bit? John, any any opinions on this one? Well, I, I think it is a recognition that there, there's, there are things that need to change with your product, which, you know, people will say, oh, well, I mean, I mean, don't draws top ratings for its share. It's, you know, you, you really break the numbers down, and, and there's been a dramatic decrease in the audience demographic, especially 18 to 34. So you bring in two guys who have a proven track record within that demographic, and that doesn't guarantee you anything. At the end of the day, these are still Vince McMahon guys. Paul Heyman, for as many of the differences with Vince McMahon over the years, is a Vince McMahon guy. Eric Bischoff, uh, not many guys know Eric Bischoff better than Vince McMahon in some sense. And Eric Bischoff is a guy who has network experience, and I think that's why he was trusted in this role to work closely with Fox officials. And we'll see how that goes. Eric Bischoff, in his own right, uh, a strong creative mind, but also had his own lap. Paul Heyman, historically one of the most creative men in pro wrestling history, and, and in particular, at building soft which right now WWE is in desperate need for star power. So you say to yourself, in theory, this sounds great, but at the end of the day, they are going to support two Vince McMahon, so you can have all these incredible creative ideas, but if they don't get signed off on, then it's all for naught. Plus, it changes a creative process that has been in place in WWE for 15 to 20 years now. And I don't expect that to happen dramatically and drastically. I suspect that will be ushered in over time, over these next three, four months, leading up to that October relaunch of sorts, and we'll see what happens. I, I, I'm one of the firm believers of I'll believe it when I see it, but I do believe that this is a firm recognition of, okay, we need to do something. Very, very well said. It's interesting. Like you kind of said, it looks great on paper. Uh, they're changing something. There's... You know, we all know the news with the ratings, like John said. Obviously, we've heard that Moxley, you know, all-time top Chris Jericho podcast episode, uh, Talk is Jericho. (laughs) I've listened to it two or three times. It's such a great episode. But it looks like WWE is responding in some way. On paper, it sounds great. You have the ECW guy and you have the WCW guy. You wouldn't think that would happen. It's a story. You know, that's the news. We're going to shake things up. This is the headline today. We're going to not keep everything the way it was. We're going to make a change. At least on paper, we're making a change. This is the story that we're hearing. So I'll get excited about it. You know, it it could happen. Uh, Paul Heyman, like you guys said, great creative mind. Uh, Eric Bischoff has accomplished a lot as well. It's, It's time for a little bit of a change. That's what fans have been asking for. Even if it's not necessarily a real change, we'll find out. But it's something. It's not nothing. And I think that's important. Matt, take us home. All right. Uh, it, it's kind of a two-pronged question there, again, with the with the Evolve show versus the AEW show. Um, that's something we saw with NWA, WCW versus WWF. Uh, 
I forget it was you know Clash of the Champions playing for free on the same night as WrestleMania or Starcade and uh, Survivor Series. Like, oh, we're not gonna give you WrestleMania if you carry Starcade on the same night or something to that effect. Back in the day, I don't have, my, my dates are probably mixed up or my shows are mixed up. Uh, that's something that happened. Uh, Kenny Omega had a very interesting deleted tweet where he kind of took Saw a swipe it. at them for opposing a benefit show. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, he realizes who are you really hurting? You're hurting the boys on that one. Uh, it's Paul and Eric. Uh, it's funny. Um, they mentioned that those are the only two people to get higher ratings than Vince McMahon on a pro wrestling show. Eric, with those 83 mm. weeks in a row in WCW with the Monday Nitro era, when Paul Heyman was the head of SmackDown, it was outperforming Raw by uh, by viewership and, and availability and by market. Uh, and something that I, I didn't think about, that was a genius bringing it up. Uh, Eric Bischoff has dealt with Turner. He has dealt with Spike Network. Uh, when he was with WWE, he was purely an on-screen role. Uh, but that's a guy who can deal with networks and knows what he's doing and if you've listened to any interviews with him, whether it's on the WWE Network or his own podcast or other people's podcasts, that's a guy who freely and readily admits the mistakes that he's made in the past and is willing to say I and, and give that advice to other people. So he could move on there. Paul Heyman with three hours and the WWE talent roster uh, that's going to be very, very interesting because I said for forget blood from a stone. Uh, Paul Heyman is a guy who can get you a gallon of orange juice out of an apple. Uh, <laughs> um, as, as good as he was, CM Punk and the pipe bomb and all that doesn't happen without Paul Heyman's advocacy in the back during those years. And wow, he, th- this is a guy who's probably – he was ready to be done with pro wrestling forever, but you that you know Grinch that stole Christmas kind of curling yeah. grin. Yeah. You could, isn't it you, funny? You could see it in your head when they announced this. Like he's being given the keys to the candy shop. Absolutely, and, and, and Matt says that he's got a smile on his face the whole time. So I think uh, I think he's excited. Go ahead, John. That is, that, that is only though to a certain degree because. He's given the keys to the candy shop, candy shop, sure, but there's a landlord. And yeah. <laughs> you have to, you know, uh, how much does the landlord can let go? And and we saw, for as, as he brought up, the, the brilliance of Paul Heyman when he was running SmackDown, but look at the tension that created at the time. And there's that infamous story of Paul flying in on a Raw writer's meeting when he shouldn't have been there. And then, obviously, Paul... Uh, being sent home after CW's pay-per-view December to December and and the combustion that occurred because of that. So while I am excited and, and I'm optimistic because I do believe Paul Heyman is the guy you want in order to build new stars, I, I, I also, you know, say so cautiously. Absolutely. Yeah, great points. Uh, like we always do here. You guys are looking at it from all sides. Very interesting. Measured uh, enthusiasm. Yeah, Measured I love enthusiasm. it. Measured enthusiasm. Leave it at that. Hey, gentlemen, thank you so much for a few minutes. Before we get out of here, we've got to do the shameless plugs. We're all about them here on the Bob Culture Podcast. Matt, tell them where they can fo- follow you on Twitter, on social media, all that good stuff, and read your amazing, my favorite SmackDown Live interviews weekly. Oh, yeah. Uh, reviewing SmackDown reviews. weekly. Uh for popbreak.com, uh, Twitter at A Anti Smark, and uh, YouTube uh, coming soon to a. Uh, ah, I can't wait. To a computational or handheld device near you. All right, stay tuned for that. Uh, John, tell us where we can follow you, of course, uh, the Living the Gimmick podcast. Where can we follow you on social media? And uh, more importantly, your coverage going on for the AEW event. Yeah, of course, you can follow me along on Twitter at John Albert, J-O-N-A-L-B-A. I'll be live tweeting the entire event, and uh, you'll be able to find some stuff. Plus, we'll have some uh, content afterwards. We will be interviewing talent after the show, just as you would with any sporting event. Uh, Living the Gimmick at the LTG Podcast on Twitter, at Wrestling Score React. Living the Gimmick, a pro wrestling podcast on Facebook. 
and livinggimmick.podbean.com. And of course, as I said before, we do have exclusive content for patrons, uh, very exclusive in-depth content, including watch-alongs every single month that are voted on by the Living the Gimmick fans. That is patreon.com forward slash Living the Gimmick. Love it, and it's a great show, one of my favorites going on right now. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for a few minutes. John, I assure you, when I get back from Warp Tour, after I watch a pay-per-view, I'll definitely be looking at some of your content for some of those interviews. Super excited for it. Guys, thank you so much for your insight, your knowledge, and just fun talking to you guys. Always a pleasure. Gentlemen, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time here on the Bob Culture Podcast. We are out. <laughs>